What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to your home for all things combat sports. Yo, yo. Guys, this video is brought to you by BetUS. There's a link in the description for a 125% sign-up bonus. So, Nick, let's get into it. Marlon Cheeto Vera, the underdog this weekend against Corey the Sandman Sanhagen. This is a great bantamweight fight in what is probably the most exciting division in the sport right now. Couldn't agree more, and San Antonio is in for a fun card. Top to bottom, this thing is stacked, but this main event is absolutely electric there's going to be some fireworks from start to finish and it almost feels like a bantamweight version of fuzzy versus gaethje which we just saw where you've got two guys that are totally different but known for knocking people out this one kind of feels like the same way you got Corey sanhagen who's ultra dynamic very good at unorthodox striking and and you've got cheeto vera who is just sleeping people and just bloodying people up every time he gets in the octagon really seems to have found his form as of late i know it's the main event but it's probably going to wind up being fight of the night as well yeah, I could see this being a fight of the night for sure. And as you said, both of these guys are dynamic strikers, but in their own way. Cheeto Vera has looked like a wrecking ball lately. He's on a four-fight win streak, and that includes most recently a brutal KO of perhaps the best bantamweight to ever compete in the sport in Dominic Cruz. So that's a very impressive win. He's riding a lot of momentum coming into this fight. Corey's coming off of a win himself against Song Yedong, but he did have two losses prior to that. Granted, it was to TJ Dillashaw, Peter Yan, two of the best in the sport, and both of those fights were controversial and close. So Corey Sanhagen could easily be on a, a three-fight win streak as well. So this is this is electric. This is a close fight. This is a good matchup. I'm leaning towards Marlon Vera to get the job done. I just feel like there's something behind Cheeto right now. He's got a lot of momentum. He's got a lot of swag. He's going to have that San Antonio crowd behind him. They're going to be very pro Vera. Not the people there don't like Corey Sanhagen, but this is going to be a largely Spanish-speaking crowd, and they're going to be showing up for the man from Ecuador. Ecuador. Absolutely. And Sanhagen's fallen on some tough times lately, but every one of those losses that he's had recently, aside from the Aljamain one that has happened now a couple of years ago, has been so competitive. And at the end of the fight, I was like, I, I kind of think like Sanhagen won, but you know, the, the judges saw it differently and he didn't get his hand raised. But I feel like Corey really has something to prove. He feels like his back's against the wall. He feels like he's the best band weight in the world. And he's kind of getting a raw deal every time he goes out there. So look for Corey to be as dangerous as ever and kind of coming in with a chip on his shoulder and also not looking to leave it in the judge's hands whatsoever but Cheeto Vera does have ice running through his veins every time he goes out there ever since the Sugar Sean fight which I know ended in a weird way but getting that win over Sugar who was a very hot prospect one of the hottest the UFC has seen in a very long time I feel like Cheeto Vera just turned into Cheeto 2.0 after that fight and he went on this just crazy streak where he's sleeping everybody and I, a picture came up the other day on Instagram of like the faces of his last four opponents and I mean it showed like the the classic Frankie Edgar up kick like when Frankie's face looked like it was deformed like he, he just went through a bunch of like G forces and Dominic Cruz after that so he just beats people down like for for Bantamweight he's one of the most powerful strikers down there so you have to be careful when you fight him but the same thing could be said for Corey Sanhagen. I mean, the guy knows how to sleep people with really unorthodox shots. And he, I know everybody points to like the flying knees and stuff. But when he's able to throw those five and six, seven times in a fight and his opponents aren't really reading them correctly and he's landing two or three of those, that just shows you the level that he's at and the creativity that he's playing with. For sure. And when I look at this matchup, I actually think that Corey Sanhagen is a little bit more complete of a fighter, certainly a more complete striker. But then I think about the fact that Cheeto, when he fought Rob Font, literally got doubled up as far as volume is concerned and still won the fight. That shows how much damage Cheeto does when he does land his shots. And those pictures that you mentioned show the actual damage that he can do inside of the cage in a very short period of time. He's going to have 25 minutes to work here, and I do think he's going to get Corey Sanhagen out of there. My final prediction will be that he wins via TKO in the fourth or fifth round, but it's going to be ultra competitive up until that point. But I think those short L elbows, those knees from the clinch. He's just got bad intentions. He's going to get Corey up against the cage. He's going to try to bully him a little bit. He's going to land some big shots. And I think they will accumulate to the point where we do get that late finish, whether it's a doctor stoppage or whether the referee has to pull Marlon off. I do think that's how the fight's going to end. But to beat Corey Sandhagen and to finish him like I'm predicting he will should put Cheeto in that title contention. It should put his name at the top of the list for the next person who should get in there and fight for a title. And that's 
saying a lot at 135 right now. Definitely. And the durability of Cheeto Vera is going to be a major factor in this fight. You know, Corey Sanhagen can throw all night long, but if you're not putting somebody down, you kind of have to start playing a points game and kind of a more perfect game, which can be a little bit difficult when you're going against somebody who's like a juggernaut and only moves forward like Cheeto Vera. So Corey Sanhagen's going to have to come out there and hit him with some really devastating shots early. And if it doesn't get Cheeto out of the fight, then he's going to have to play the outside, control the octagon from the outside, which is very difficult, and basically go to the judges' scorecards, which have not been in his favor as of late. I say all that to say that I do think that Corey has the skills to win this fight, but I think the durability and the power of Cheeto Vera is what's going to give him the edge. I see it just like you do, a late finish, maybe third round or fourth round for Cheeto Vera, something devastating where the referee's going to have to step in. 